Hello, and welcome to the Harrison County Library System's ad Adult and Teen uh, Reading Program, Summer Reading Program, and uh, my name is Jeff Conwell, and I have made for you what's Tales from the Ramayana. It's a shadow puppet play based on one of the Hindu epics called the Ramayana. It, uh, it's about Lord Rama, who's an incarnation of Vishnu. He becomes a king, but and he's destined to kill this evil demon named Ravana. It's an epic battle. Um, you can read about it sometime. It's really pretty cool. The Javanese were settled a long time ago uh, by Hindu missionaries and part of their uh, legacy is this um, art of the Wayankule puppetry and it's a way of teaching about everything related to the stories and in this particular story Rama, his uh, He's ex exiled from being a king by his dad, who gets um, his his wife, one of his three wives, who's not Rama's mother, convinces him that he should exile Rama to the forest. And along the way, he, when he goes with his wife Sita into the forest, he gets Sita gets kidnapped. And then they find uh, he along the way of looking for her, uh, Rama and his brother, who's with him, his other brother. Um, he uh, named Lakshman. They find uh, they run into Hanuman, and he's the Monkey King. Anyway, the puppets are made out of leather and bone and other stuff, and they're very elaborate. They're very hard to make. I had my own version of them using a laminator and a, a razor. And anyway, I'm going to show you after the show how to make one of these, and then I'll have even have some deleted scenes. Before I leave you though, I want to show you an actual artifact that I, I got online from Bali. It's called the, let me get this right, the Gunangan, it's a, or Kayon. It's a tree, like the tree of life. You can see it here. And it's the trees right there. There's a little house that represents the doorway between the worlds of us and the cosmic world and good and bad and everything. It's just sort of a part of the symbolism that's very rich in Javanese puppet theater and I thought you might like to look at that and anyway I hope you enjoyed the show and if you got any questions LibraryDude1999 at gmail.com thank you see to my love I cannot believe we are finally married. You are so precious to me, so beautiful. I do not deserve you. I give you this ring, this other ring, as a pledge of my love, never to abandon you. If you are lost or in trouble, I give it to you to know that I will always look after you and come after you if you should be in trouble. My liege, do not worry yourself. This is such a happy time. I wish to cherish it and not think thoughts of ill, but I take this ring as a sign of your devotion to me. I do not deserve you, but, but what, my love? It's nothing. It's just something my grandfather once said about being in danger. You think that we'll have a lifetime of danger? No, my love, it will be an adventure. And if I am one day to be king soon, I shall need you as to be my queen, and I know you shall be a good one. Oh, my love, I hope to bear you many sons and daughters, and I just, I'm so overwhelmed. I know, my love, so am I. This is the happiest day of our lives. We shall always remember it. Yes, my liege, I will always remember it. Come, the ceremony is still ongoing. Remember, the feast goes on for several days, and then we shall see of things of the future. <clears throat> the time has come for me to retire. I have served my people well, 
I have ruled the earth wisely. My kingdom is prosperous and at peace. I have no enemies, and my sons have grown up into fine young men. Tomorrow, under the auspicious constellation of Pushya, I shall crown Rama, my beloved eldest son, king of Kosala, ruler of Ayodhya. May you serve him with the same love and loyalty that you have served me. Rama, Rama, Rama. Rama, 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 Rama. All hail King Dasarata, victory to Rama. Are you happy with the news? Look at you. You're a fool. What are you doing laughing and smiling and getting all dressed in your finery? It's as if it was your own son who was being crowned king tomorrow. Oh, Maranta, are you in one of your moods? Of course I'm celebrating. Rama is my son too. He loves me as much as he does his own mother. I'm so happy for him, aren't you? Ah! You have no idea what is in store for you if Rama becomes king. When Rama is king, Rama's mother, Kushaya, will be the most powerful woman in the whole kingdom. It will make no difference that you are Rama's father's favorite wife. You and your son will be shut aside. You will have no power. You will have to beg for favors. Is that the life you want to live? Huh? What did you say? You think Rama will not treat me will treat me differently once he becomes king? Will the old king have no more powers? Will my son have to serve his brother? Will I be a nobody? That is exactly what will happen. Kikea, once your, if your father did not marry you so that you could be treated like an old and unimportant woman, he wanted you to marry to be powerful. The favorite wife of a doting husband who would answer anything you asked. It would do anything for you. Oh, what will happen to me? What will happen? Will I be a nobody? I certainly don't want to be ignored. I most certainly don't want my son to be a servant. What shall I do, Marata? Help me. Dear, all is not lost. We still have a few tricks left. We can make sure Rama is not crowned tomorrow. But how? How can we make sure that Rama is not crowned tomorrow? You must at once call for the king. He shall surely run to you as he always has these years. You have ultimate power over him, Kikea. Do you remember when you were lo long ago, he promised you two boons? What if you ask for them now? He said he would give you whatever you asked. The first boon you can ask for the king to banish Rama into the forest. And the second, to make your son, Bharata, your king. Just tell him, ask him, send word. But first, m 
take your makeup off and mess up your hair and tear your clothes and look very sad and he will do as you ask. You really think so? Yes. Go. Go send for a messenger. He'll come at once. I promise. Okay. Let me be. What is it? Part of my youth. Why are you not dressed for the festival? I am so troubled. My husband. I. I'm afraid that I have to ask for those two boons you once promised me so long ago when I was a little girl. You remember when I helped save your life in battle? Yes, I remember. You were such a young thing, a beauty. You helped save me. What are these wounds you ask of me? The first is that you must make Arata king instead of Brahma. What? I'm afraid to ask. What is the second boon? The second boon, my love, is that you must banish Rama to the forest for 14 years. 14 years? But why? You know how much I love him? If you do not do as I ask, I will never speak to you again. Oh, my heart. Oh, it breaks. I must honor these pledges I made to you. But you do not know what you ask, my love. Oh. Oh. I leave you with a heavy heart. Oh. This is so difficult. This is so difficult, but I must honor my promise. Rama, Rama, come to me, my son. Oh, I do not wish to make him keep, uh, go to the forest, but I must honor my promise to Kakea. I am here, Father. Good morning. How are you? Not good, my son. I am old and tired. I have some sad news to tell you. You cannot be king. I must choose Bharata because of a promise I made to your other mother, Kakea, a long time ago. Father, it is okay. It is okay. I will do as you wish because you are my father and it is good to obey one's father. Perhaps someday you will rule the kingdom, but for now you must be exiled into the forest for 14 years. Take your wife Sinta, the lovely Sinta, with you and uh, please Know that you always have my love. I always do, Father. You have been very good to me. I just wish to follow your honorable path. Thank you for being such a good father to me. Oh, 
This breaks my heart, my son. And let's go lay down. Yes, Father. Hmm. Some, some day, maybe. Hey! Rama! Barata! It is good to see you, my brother. Have you heard? Have you heard? Heard what? You are to become king, not me. What? Me, king? I hardly think that's fitting. You are the chosen one. You are the eldest. I know, but right now, this is not the time. Perhaps, perhaps nothing. I never wanted anything to do with being a king, my brother. Never did I even think about it. I have to obey our father's wishes. I was exiled to the forest for 14 years. I will live there with my wife, Sinta. You must rule the kingdom, Varata. I will respect your wishes, Rama. My brother, here we go, Sita. It'll be a long journey, but I actually can't wait to discover what's in the forest. Rama, Sita, who? Lakshman. Lakshman, what are you doing? Go back to the palace. Don't you know that the forest could be dangerous for such a young, crazy prince as yourself? Lakshman, it is good to see you. You too, Sita. I decided it's better for me to spend 14 years in a jungle than 14 years in a palace without my brother Rama. And you too, Sita. Oh, okay. If that's what you decided then, but this burden is heavy. When we come to the next clearing, you're going to get to carry it. Uh, okay. Come on, Tita. Come on, Lakshman. I'm coming. Wow, look at the trees, so many trees. Sita, my love, I have sent Lakshman off to get a fire started, gather some wood. Let us spend some time alone together. I love you so. I am so fortunate to have you as my wife. And I too am so fortunate to have such a man like you as my husband. Even though we are exiled, this time will be a very special time for us. I feel it in my deepest, deepest part of my heart. You are just the dream of my dreams. And you, my love, are the loveliest creature I've ever seen. A man can never be happier and he is right now with nothing but the love in his heart for his lovely wife. I love you too. I should like to dance with you. Yes, let's. But you gotta let go of my hand first. Ah. 
while Rama and Sita were enjoying their time together, far above flew an evil demon king named Ravana. Ravana was flying in his Vimana, his flying chariot. Ravana was a terrible demon. He had ten heads in one form, with twenty arms and twenty legs, and he was a fierce demon. And he was always looking for trouble. But when he looked down, he saw the lovely Sita, and he stopped his chariot in midair and said, I must have her. And so he landed and planned his capture of Sita. Ravana had to plan where he knew that Sita could not resist. He asked his uncle Maricha to turn himself into a deer and Ravana made him so so beautiful with his pelt so gorgeous that he knew that Sita could not resist the deer. So he just went, bye uncle, go get her. And the uncle turned and ran to where Sita and Rama were. I can't wait, I can't wait. At dawn the next day, Sita was sitting down by the lake it was a gorgeous morning, and then suddenly inbounded this wonderful deer. It had the most magical pelt, and she just wanted to have it. I must ask Rama to get it for me, she said. Later that day, Lakshman and Sita were walking down a hill and the deer just bounded right past them. Oh, look, the deer. We must tell Rama. Please, brother, let us see if we can get this deer. I must have it. Okay. It's a pretty deer. Rama argued with Sita about the deer but finally he relented. He got his bow that the sages had given him and his brother Lakshman had grabbed his sword. Brother, let me come with you along on this hunt. No, Lakshman, I need you to stay with Sita to guard her in case anything happens. Oh, brother, you never let me have any of the fun. That's okay, Lakshman. Sita said, I am glad for your company. I see something. I'm off. The hour had gotten late, and still Rama hadn't returned, when suddenly they heard this loud, Bah! Sita felt very frightened. Lakshman! Lakshman, you must go see about your brother. No, Rama told me to stay and watch after you. But please, don't you understand? He's my only love, and he's your brother. Please, Rama, please go see about Rama, Lakshman. Um, okay. But before I go, I'm going to do a thing one of the sages taught me. I'm going to draw a circle around you with this sword and you must promise me, Sita, promise me that you will not cross it. If you do so, you will put yourself in danger. The circle will protect you as long as you're inside it. Do you promise? Yes. Okay. Now here I go. And so Lakshman draws a circle around Sita. You're sure about this? Yes, please, just go. Okay. 
And so Lakshman went to look for Rama. As it grew later still, Sita grew more and more worried. I wonder what happened to them. Where can they be? Oh, I should not have even asked Lakshman to go. I'm so frightened. But at least I'm around this magic circle inside it. Nothing can happen to me. You have arms for me? Oh, look. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. I just need a little water. Maybe some food. Do you have any? Yes, I do. But I can't cross this line here. Oh, oh that's okay. I'll come to you. Oh! What? Oh no! Uh, I think I have to come to you! Oh! And so Sita crossed the line and the beggar transformed himself into none other than I have you now! I'm so terrified. Oh, go away. I have you. I'm going to take you away. I think you're the prettiest thing I've ever seen. Oh, oh, what have I done? And so Sita was kidnapped by the evil demon king Ravana and taken in his flying chariot, the Ramana to his kingdom of Lanka. The next morning, when Rama and Lakshman finally came back and they saw that Sita was no longer there, Brother, what should we do? I left her with the magic circle to protect her, but she's gone. I have no idea, but the only thing that I know to do is to go through the forest and seek and see where we can may find her. We must find her, Lakshman. I do forgive you for leaving her, but we got to find my love. Yes, my brother. Deep in the forest, Rama and Lakshman looked for Sita everywhere, but they could find no sign of her. I'm beginning to give up hope, Lakshman. I got to find Sita. It's okay, my brother. I know it's hard, but we'll find her. Wait, I hear something. You hear that? Yes. Something big's coming. What is it, brother? I'm afraid. You know, Lakshman, so am I, even with this bow. Hello. Who are you? Ah, giant monkey. Fear not, my friend. My name is Hanuman. I am king of the monkeys, and I just recently learned my real name, that I am also son of the god of the air, and I can change my size and fly. You seek your love, Sita, yes? Oh, oh, I am so grateful. Yes, how do you know? Well, we monkeys know many things. I have many of my troops. My monkeys will look, but I think we can find her. I can stand on the tallest mountain and I can think I can actually see Lanka. I think your wife, your lovely wife, even from a distance I can tell how pretty she is. She is in Lanka. If you wish, I can fly and tell her that you look for her. Yes? Oh, please, please. 
But before you go, let me give you a ring. It's a ring I made a promise to her that I would never abandon her. Okay. And so it was that Rama and Hanuman became the best of friends and he gave Hanuman his ring to give to his love Sita. And with that, Hanuman was off to seek Sita, Rama's true love. As he helps Lord Rama find Sita, he flies over the city of King Ravana. And lo and behold, he finds Sita sitting under a tree. He drops a ring that Lord Rama had given to her, and she finds it. What's this? I find a ring that falls from a tree that belongs to my own husband? How is this so? Wow. Why? What? Who are you? I am Hanuman. Great lady, let me bow before you. My name is Hanuman, and I am a great friend of your husband, Prince Rama. And Prince Rama has instructed me to help you and to escape from the evil demon king, Ravana. Oh, that is good news. But first, I am very hungry for my journey here. Is it permissible for me to eat of the fruit of these trees and this wonderful garden? I am very hungry. Yes, it is. But you must not pluck the fruit. You must Eat only of the fruit that has fallen from the tree, not pick it. Uh, okay, well, let me go eat and then we'll work on your rescue. Okay. So, after leaving Sita, Hanuman proceeded to go around the garden and look at the trees for food. He tried to remember, she said, not to take the trees directly, not to take the fruit, not to pluck it, but to shake the tree and get the fruit as it fell. So Hanuman came upon a big, huge apple tree. He looked at it and he said, I must say Rama and become large. So. He went Rama, 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 Rama. And he became a giant monkey. And he proceeded to go to the tree and to shake the tree. But as all the fruit fell, he knocked over the tree and ate all the fruit. And then he went to another tree. The next tree. Hanuman sees is a banana tree and what monkey even a giant monkey king doesn't like bananas he almost goes literally ape over them oh oh monkey I love bananas I love bananas bananas are good bananas are delicious bananas are so good that oh 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 well And then he goes to find another tree. Then Hanuman spots another tree. Delicious yellowish kind of fruit. He doesn't know what the name of the tree is, but it looks very good. And he decides, I'm going to try this one too. And then he shakes the tree and the fruit falls 
and so does a tree. He goes to look for another tree. He's still hungry. Finally, the last tree Adamlin spots is a cherry tree, his very favorite of all. And seeing there are no cherries, he says, even though I love cherry trees, I must take it down. I must get the cherry fruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it goes. Oh. I think I take a nap now. When the evil king Ravana heard that Hanuman had destroyed his forest of fruit, he was furious. destroyed my trees? Why? Oh, he has destroyed my trees? He must be punished. You must get him for me. Yes, my liege. I will try, but he is very clever and very fast, and he has very money magic tricks. What can I do to get him? I will give you a magic chain that you can bind him with. Just make sure that he's asleep, because he will be his normal size again. Yes, my niece, we will find him. I will go. When Hanuman woke up from his nap, he found that he had magical chains wrapped around him, and he could not change back into a giant monkey. In front of him sits the evil King Ravana on his throne of gold. Gold! Hanuman sees that Ravana's whole city is made of gold. Yo! Yo, bad monkey! You deserve a very terrible punishment! I know just the thing! We are going to set your tail on fire! I have... Uh, Oil here, my liege. The cloth is ready. Shall we burn it now? Yes! Yes! Do it now! Poor Hanuman. All he could think of was his friend, Prince Rama. Prince Rama, who is just a wonderful, good man. He was somebody he could depend on. He wanted to help his friend, but now his tail was going to be set aflame. Then something magical happened. Suddenly Hanuman's tail grew by at least three feet. Everyone is, was astonished, especially Ravana. What is this, you monkey? What is happening? Set his tail aflame! I'm going to get more cloth, my liege, and we'll need more oil. There, my liege. I have got more cloth bound on his tail, and I am ready to pour. And as soon as he heard the word pour, all Hanuman saw was the face of Rama his very blue friend, who was very good to him, was like the best friend he ever had. And then it happened again. What? What is this? This trickery! Your tail keeps growing! What is it? What is it? Set it afire! I will try, my liege, but we are running out of Oil and, and cloth to bind it with. I don't care. Get it done. Stupid monkey. Rama, 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 Rama. This was all that Hanuman could think of at this terrible time in his life. Rama, Rama, please help me. You have always been my good friend, 
and will always will be. And please, I need your help now. With that, Hanuman's tail grew an enormous length, went through the doors of the king's palace, out through the city streets, and was almost the whole length of the city. Ravana, bad king that he was, cursed and spat and said he would have to take matters into his own hands. Sire, we have run out of oil and cloth to bind the monkey's tail. It keeps growing. What shall we do? Okay, I will take care of this. Just you watch. But stand back. With that, the evil king Ravana, demon that he was, produced a flame with his own breath, and he set the monkey's tail afire. With that, Hanuman broke free of his chains, and with his tail afire, he flew over the golden city and set it aflame with his tail. It was such destruction, Ravana and his troops were thrown totally into confusion. But before he went to quench his tail into the sea, he wanted to make sure that Sita was okay. My lady, are you hurt? Are you hurt? No, Hanuman. I am safe here in this house. But tell me, will it be soon that my husband will come to rescue me? I think now, with the confusion I've caused, it will be soon, my lady. Thank you for coming. It means so much to know that my Lord Rama will come. Thank you. You shall see each other again soon, I hope. Yes, my lady. Goodbye. And check it out, y'all. I found a really cool website for some Walankuli templates from the Ramayana, which I'm doing for the program. And this is Hanuman. He's the monkey king. Helps out the hero Rama to find his wife that's been kidnapped, Sita. Well, if you can see, I've been very busy today making the whole Ramayana almost in one day thanks to these templates, but I had a little bit of an accident with Rama. His arm got twisted up when I rushed to get the laminator over, but I think I'm going to use it for when he shoots Ravana, his enemy who kidnapped Sita, and make it like he's got almost uh, pulling a bow, and I'll use his other hand for when he's just regularly moving his hand. So we'll see. I'm excited. Hope you enjoying the show. I gotta show you how he came out. I'm really happy with him. This is all I have is the connectors, but like he's ready to shoot. And he just got his fingers, so anyway, it's pretty cool. 
And the way I did it was by observing. Uh, when I looked at the puppets online, I looked at where the buttons went to connect them all. And if you notice right here, the flip side of Alexander, he's got these two arms are connected. So whenever I just control this arm, his other arm's going to move. And the same thing with the uh, the bow on Rama here. His bow is connected. His hands are taped to both the bow and the arrow, but the only uh, arm I'm actually controlling is the bow arm, so that whenever I move the bow arm, see if I can do this one-handed with that. I'm just gonna move the bow arm. His, you can, oh, hold on. Okay, and you see the, the movement ever so slightly. It's connected. So that's how you make that. Now, <clears throat> for the adult version of the scenes from the Ramayana, I actually have to make more of the scenery for it, and there's more scenes. One of them is where the bad demon king uh, Ravana captures Sita and runs off in a chariot, and they have these flying chariots in the um, Hindu um, mythology. And um, it's kind of like a UFO, but it's a flying chariot. It's called a, uh, oh my gosh, I forgot the name again, a Vimana. And it looks like kind of like this. It would have flying stuff in there. And then there's Sita right here. And then the other guy that's, I mean, the guy is um, Ravana right there. And anyway, and I made this kind of cool tree. I don't know if it's actually part of that thing, but um, anyway. I'm going to make, uh, it was in a scene that I saw, uh, another shadow play. I liked it a lot. And now, <clears throat> just because I can and got the time for it, I didn't have it for all of the others uh, that I did. But I've got, you'll see the, uh, after, if you see the, the time lapse thing I did in making another uh, version of, uh, of Rama, because I have him with a bow and arrow, and I really like it. I didn't want to have to mess it up and uh, do it all over again. So I just ended up making another Rama. And I'm going to punch holes. This is the traditional Bali Wayang Kulit uh, puppets. And they actually have holes punched. You can't really see it, but his costume's got these little bitty tiny dots all over it. And the holes are punched so that the light will come through. You can see in his eye right there the light comes through and I didn't have time um, for uh, all the others to do it but I'm gonna do it for him so that we're gonna see the difference but anyway Now I'm making the puppet for King Dasarata, who is Rama's father. And I want to show you how to safely make the holes that you need to do. The buttons I was talking about are the connectors for the arms and legs. Of course, Bali puppets from Bali don't have moving legs like we would normally. But anyway, I take a, just a empty, well, a roll of tape or something circular and hollow in the middle. It's going to make my own pin cushion here. Take a piece of cardboard, put it over it, and then I'm going to just simply place the where I want to make the spot for the hole, and then take a regular pin, push pin, and put it 
and make a hole that's going to fit nicely for either a piece of thread or the fishing line. You can barely see it, but you can see it right there. Anyway, that's how you do that. This is one of my coolest discoveries. I found out if you use plastic tops for uh, containers like Tupperware, you can make really cool different light uh, combinations. That's my night light, the blue. I've got one of these old fashioned lights that um, has three lights at different levels. This is one at the medium level, so it looks actually more like the sun up in the sky. And this is a standard red Tupperware container. This one's a see-through red, so it's kind of like um, dawn. It's a neat orange, almost like sunset or maybe a city on fire. Even though these are probably most of them microwave, uh, you can use them in the microwave. I would not recommend leaving them on the light for source for too long. You don't want to cause a fire. Really, I'd be remiss if I didn't show you my little stage I made. It was just a big trifold that I got from Hobby Lobby. I cut out a square. It was about 18 by 24 inches wide, and I covered the inside part the screen with a drafting um, big old drafting sheet of paper that's lasted me a good long while front side is it just it is what it is but the the drafting paper is so light that it would come through easy the light that's the front side of course well you see better this way then on the back side where all the magic happens I actually put the sets usually behind it and the light that I have, this is a three, it's got three little uh, lights, different light levels. I only really use the bottom one right here and I place it right in the middle. And for holding the puppets, I told everybody what I did was, uh, actually no, numerous ways I put the puppets. I've seen where they have sandpaper at the bottom to hold them steady. When you use the bamboo uh, points, they've got like little sticks. The point, pointed ends will stick in the sandpaper and it'll stay. That can be good, but you do have to measure it out from the distance from the bottom of the stage uh, where the, the black ends and the paper begins. I actually marked it out with some tape right here. And then um, uh, one thing I did re most... Uh, I don't know how I discovered it, but when I made this uh, Indian uh, Native American puppet called uh, Pushing Up the Sky, I had to get all these poles to be pushed up at once. And I figured if I had one surface from which I could push, like with one, um, one level, all the sticks, the poles that they were pushing up in the sky, if I just pull on the thing that was perpendicular to the poles, they would all go up at the same time. So what I did was I took a library commission rulers that had been given me and I drilled little holes in them and it just so happened that the holes that fit all of the bamboo the little bamboo skewers fits perfectly to place characters at different stages on it you just have to put it on a level that's right at the level of the stage and they stay the only thing is they don't move around and if you want it to where you have a lot of movement with their hands you can do that but it was one way I did it. The other way I did it, and it worked pretty well, I think if you see from the show, was I took these guys. This is just heavy tape, electric tape. And what I did was I stuffed the inside with the stuff you use for flower pots, for artificial flowers that you put in. I just would put it in here and then stick one of my characters, here's old Flip Dog, one of my favorite characters actually, from my Paul Bunyan show, Flip Dog. And I would just stick the stick that I would put in, in the bottom like that. And then he would go, of course, Stip Dog, 
uh, flip dog is actually perpendicular, so it wouldn't show you the better way to do this. Let's do Lakshman. This is Rama's brother. And you just stick them in like so. And you put them right up to the stage like that. And see, you can move his arms like that. So anyway, I sure enjoyed making this for y'all. I hope you get to have fun with it yourself. When Hanuman went to the Magic Mountain. When Hanuman went to the mountain, he looked and looked for the medicine, but he couldn't find it. So he grew big and decided he was going to bring the mountain to the battle to help people heal. So with his great strength, he grew big and lifted up the mountain and then flew it to the battlefield. Parata, Parata, my brother, I've been looking for you. I am not Parat. I am not Rama. I am not Rama. I am looking for King Alexander. Have you seen him? No? Who is Alexander? I don't know where he is. But we have a serpent. We must get it killed. Oh.